Drop two out of three to the Yankees. I want to say they definitely should have won the first two, but Friday was a back and forth game. They won it. Saturday, they're down to the final out. Jansen blows another save. They lose in extra innings. Yesterday, non-competitive on Sunday Night Baseball. It's the first time the Yankees have beaten them in a series. I think it's only the second series the Yankees have won all month. And the Red Sox feel like they're floundering. They are floundering. Leading into tomorrow's Major League Baseball trade deadline. You can jump in here. Hour number two, Jones and Mego with Arkin on WEEI. We'll get to your phone call, 617-779-7937. Red Sox made some moves late last week and over the weekend. Help me with the timeline. You guys knew about Paxton late last week, right? Yep. Did you know about Jansen or was that over the weekend? No, that was over the weekend. Okay. So they've traded, traded for Arkan's guy, James Paxton, which I got to be honest, I don't get. He was DFA. Nobody wanted him. He was released. So I don't get why they gave up anything. Like, I'm not going to cry about giving up some 17-year-old in the Dominican League, but he was DFA'd. He was going to be free. So I don't know why they had to give up anything. Because someone else who had a better waiver claim would could have picked him up ahead of you. That's why. Okay. Then you don't have James Paxton. Then you miss out on yeah. Maple. Paxton, so, this, so they gave up some Dominican League summer guy. Here's, here's what I'm saying. Him, yeah. I would rather have the 17-year-old in the Dominican Summer League than James Paxton is what I'm telling you. And if you missed well, out on James Paxton, idiotic. oh, well, you missed out on James Paxton. Okay. Well, the Dodgers wanted the 17-year-old more. So Great. why is that idiotic? Good for them. Oh. Well, they have a better pitching staff. They actually have now. a real pitching staff. Okay. Like guys that they've invested well, in who are injured and don't are coming tell me, back now. Don't tell me it's idiotic. The Dodgers released him for nothing, and then it's, they turned around and traded for The somebody. Red Sox only have four starters. So, yeah, that's okay. a little bit different than the Dodgers in their situation. Cooper Criswell, greater than James Paxton. I tried to tell you this last week. James anyway. Paxton, greater than Brian Bayo. James Paxton, greater than Cutter yeah. Crawford. Yeah. Uh, so, what are well, you talking about? No, Numbers-wise, yes, he is. Not better than Cutter Yes, Crawford. he is. No, he's not. His stats are better. Okay. But is... <laughs> is, is what Fine. Is, you don't think he is. I'm saying statistically he is. Okay. What, his ERA is lower. What statistics? His wins? His, his, ERA, his ERA is lower and his record okay, better, Okay, yes. but it, it got passed by him like the last two starts, our kid. I'm just telling you, Cutter, who would I rather have? Cutter Crawford or James Paxton? Cutter Crawford. They have to start Bayo. They have no options. You have to start him. You just paid him. So, like, uh, he might be an upgrade on Bayo. Bayo's been terrible. Paxton stinks is the point. I don't know why we're still arguing about this. So, Bayo, uh, uh, Paxton, they brought in. Kenley Jansen is a right-handed, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Danny Jansen, rather, not Kenley Jansen. Danny Jansen Cousin is a, Danny. a right-handed bat that they added, which I'm okay with adding a right-handed bat, but he's now your backup catcher to your other right-handed catcher, which I really didn't get that move. But fine, you want to add to your bench? I don't care. You can upgrade Reese McGuire, who I think, you know, had his final moment. When he was called out for what he did at the dollar store parking lot. Undulating. Uh, uh, undulating in his car in the dollar store parking lot. Then he and, was trying to pick a fight in the uh, afterwards. So I think. All, okay. That was Wait, pretty cool. Really quick on that. I think camp? all of that, by the way, is fair for the Red Sox to move on. It, it they, was very strange in K Chris Cotillo's report yesterday. I think it was with Sean McAdam in Mass Live that yes. he said that McGuire wasn't made aware of what. He was saying to him until after the game, and yeah. he got mad all over again. So all the guys—how like, did you not know what he was saying to you? All the guys got in the clubhouse and they saw it on TV. I'm guessing he knew. I know what McAdam and Cotillo wrote. I'm guessing he knew. I don't think all the teammates knew. And by my understanding of that story, the teammates were ready to fight in Colorado. I don't know if if he actually was Reese McGuire, but Jaron Duran was one of them. I forget who the other who were ready to go like throw down with the Rockies after the game. My guess is that story back in the news, the Red Sox are just like, we don't need this headache anymore. He's getting called out on the field for what happened, and he stinks, so Would let's move on. Would you say it was him. a climactic moment? It was a, it was a that very... That he had been waiting for for it, a long time? It was something he was waiting and waiting and waiting for a payoff, and he almost got there, uh, and then, then he backed away. And so I don't mind upgrading on your backup catcher. Fine. But that's not enough. Who in their right minds thinks that's enough? And then they get the move today. Quinn Priester? Priester. Priester. I wanted to say Priestler. Quinn Priester from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Jason Priest Lee. Maybe that's yeah. what I am thinking of, actually, yeah. So they trade Nick York, which I, that was one of my requests, by the way. Like, I'm like, part with a top 10-ish prospect. I wasn't sure exactly where York fit in. I thought it was the back end of the top 10. I checked today. He was 12. It's right above Wells, but not quite Kenny Bunkport. <laughs> so get rid of York. It's, uh, it's like your first stop in Maine, right, York? <laughs> uh, so get rid of him. I'm okay with that. I assume they would get something more than a guy who's been worse than James Paxton as a starting pitcher. He's a former top prospect. He's a former first-round pick. We were trying to figure out where he's going to fit into the team. Is he a starting pitcher? Is he a relief pitcher? It turns out he's none of those for the Boston Red Sox because he's been optioned to AAA Worcester. So I, I, don't, I can't imagine they traded for him to leave him there. He's some sort of reclamation project. He's been pitching out of the bullpen for Pittsburgh, so maybe they're trying to stretch him back out to get him into their rotation and ultimately take James Paxton's spot. But 
I just I can't get jazzed up over any of these moves. I, I thought, and maybe this just speaks to Nick York and his value. I just thought they would get something on the big league team for Nick York. I thought at least, and and maybe he's just fallen off that much as a prospect. They're all super meh. They're all super meh moves. Like, technically, you filled two areas of need, but I go back to what Breslow said last week, which was that he was intent on improving this team. Do these moves actually improve the team? Like, you're filling some areas of need with a right-handed bat, and then you, you know, move on from Reese McGuire and his off-field drama. And maybe Paxton helps with your depth and is a little insurance if you're not going to do anything else with the rotation. But you didn't go out and get a meaningful reliever yet. Your bullpen is absolutely spiraling through July. We're almost to August now. You need to do something. You need to bring in somebody who is an actual improvement, who is actually better than the guys that you've had here, be they injured or they are just out of commission right now or they're just not playing well. Like none of these guys are, maybe you'll disagree, Arkan, with James Paxton, but none of these guys are real improve, improvements over what you had. Guys, real quick, what did you say about Paxton and Cutter Crawford? I had to fact check you on this. What, are, what did you say about Paxton and Cutter Paxton Crawford? Paxton had a better ERA than Crawford. But he doesn't. He doesn't? No. You sure about that? I'm positive. He has a 360 ERA. Pa- Paxton has a 443 ERA. Maybe I was thinking of Pavetta. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, I was, I was so flabbergasted that he had better... ERAs than Cutter Crawford, who stunk his last couple of starts. I was thinking of Nick Pavetta. Nick Pavetta, I, I misspoke. I, I, meant, would, I meant Nick Pavetta. I would take Pavetta 100 times out of 100 over James Paxton. But anyway, Meg, I'll ask you a question. Um, the answer here, I think, is that uh, James Paxton is not, and I said this from the very beginning, I like him more than you guys do. I like yes. him more than most people. Yeah. But no, I don't no, think you do. that, that, is a, uh, that is enough to fix this rotation. I said that from the very beginning. I'm fine with him getting James Paxton, but that's not, you need to do more than that in order to help this, uh, and help this rotation and get it to where it needs to be. He's a patch on a hole in your boat. He's not the, he's not the upgrade on the boat that I'm looking for. And James I think Patchton. That that's, yeah, James Patchton. That's a good way of putting it. Um, and I think you need to do more there. If this is all they're doing, then that's ridiculous. If that's all they're doing for a right-handed power bat is Danny Jansen, that's ridiculous. And if the only real bullpen move they're making is Priester over here, this is a ridiculous deadline. This is about this is as bad as anything High and Bloom ever did. Like this is not uh. this is not acceptable. I don't think uh, this is really, especially when you look around and see almost every other team that's in the hunt right now making meaningful, impactful moves. The Yankees getting Chisholm, and uh, you know these uh, the Royals making a move today. Uh, you see the Mariners making all sorts of moves and. Teams Teams in your division selling off pieces. There's a bunch of sellers. I saw it only the other day. It's like, well, there's not that many teams selling. Yes, there are. There's like six or seven. Oh right no, no, now. no, 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 no. The whole the whole league now is making trades. That, yeah. that's gone up in smoke. And Everybody's it, doing it except you. You're just doing these little side moves. The most teams that are selling are in your division, right? Toronto started to sell. Tampa's the biggest seller there is. Yep. At the deadline right now. And so you're right. The Mariners who you're playing, they got a Rosarena. They got a reliever as well. The name escapes me. Uh, you're talking about Kansas City. They got Yimmy Lorenzen. Garcia, they they got Lorenzen today, right? So, right. They, so these teams are making moves, and you got again Danny Jansen off the bench. Great, uh, fine. He's a backup catcher upgrade. I'll allow it. Paxton for scraps. That's not that's not even fake buying. Come talk to me about Priester. If Priester's going to help your bullpen, then I I will say okay. They got a relief arm. Let's see if he can help. It's helping uh, the Woo Sox right now. Well, so this is what I'm saying. If he's just a stash in AAA because they're trying a reclamation project, that does not count as fake buying. Parting with Nick York to help your bullpen, if this guy uh, plugs into your bullpen, come talk to me. So I don't know enough about him. I got to see where he fits in. But if he helps in the bullpen, uh, then I- I'm okay with that kind of move. It looks to me like he's either going to pitch in Worcester or he's a longer-term fix in your rotation, which I like that plan less. Uh, you can jump in. How do you feel about the Red Sox? What sort of level of faith do you have in them sitting here at the trade deadline tomorrow? 